We haven't joined talking about pizza. We're just talking about pizza. <laughs> I know. Everybody should, loves should pizza. Should have been here for uh, us talking about pineapples on pizza last night. Oh, um, I'm okay with pineapples. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but only under the pizza. So the 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 stage is going to come through. We're getting a delay, uh, so the questions uh, that people can ask, uh, ask them in the chat. Hey, we're so live. One. Yay! Hi, everyone. I can see you now. Hi. Hi. And so I just I'll hand it over and I'll read out the questions if if you want. So, right. Whoever. Wow. Right. Does anyone want to? Yeah. Does anyone want to? Um, Oh, but we got some delay. Or do you want to... Yes, <laughs> there's a yeah, delay. Yeah. Well, it's speed of light is not fast enough. <laughs> no, we're, it's copper wire. So, Gerald, did you want to start off with a presentation, or did did someone else want to take that? Well, we yeah, I wasn't sure whether you make a present presentation. <laughs> no slides, but I wasn't sure whether you would say one or two wise words, or we just dive in. I, I, you know, I'm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's... now they're not working for me. <laughs> you're, you're done, and, and your job is to send out T-shirts. <laughs> Discrimination. <laughs> well, talk to people. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, welcome everyone to the board session on, on behalf of the board and, and OpenSUSE. This, unfortunately, is our second event in a row, as in the annual OpenSUSE conference that we all have to sit in front of screens, smaller or larger. I think Simon has a bigger one. Mine is just 14 inch right now, um, but also nicer, all the nicer to, to connect. And before we dive into, into the board part, I, I wanted just to say a big thank you. A big thank you to everyone who helped put this together, to organize, um, to speak, present, engage, listen. I mean, support, uh, support in any way. You know, packaging some of the software, running some of the infrastructure that powers the conference, um, yeah. contributing to OpenSUSE. Um, over the years, being a user, even filing bug reports, <laughs> um, everything. It's really nice to have, have this, this community. Um, this is a non-slide presentation. Weird. There's so many, so much screen time, there's so many slides that we just want to focus on the talk track. And, and before we dive in, um, let's welcome some of the new board members <laughs> in, in alphabetical order, Hjatjan or Nurft, or however you pronounce that, um, was elected in, in the last elections to, to join the board again. Want to briefly introduce yourself? Okay, I'm uh, Hjatjan. Listen to that pretty well, Gerald. Hjatjan, uh, <laughs> aka Knurft. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much everywhere. I'm in the board. I'm still a forums admin, though. I've become less active because life happened and work happened. Um, I'm pretty active on uh, the channels of, that we have on Discord, Telegram, uh, Matrix, uh, stuff like that. And what I really like is that we have managed to... and gauge some younger people, they engage their friends, and we've seen it happen in the bar sessions that uh, that we have. I'm also a co-founder of the bar, by the way. Um, <laughs> that's what I do, and I live in Groningen, Netherlands. The music, you're, you're, by the way? Get on, you're muted. I am muted. Yeah, the other one uh, who joined in the last elections is Neil, um, who, for who every single board meeting is a strong um, 
testament of his dedication to open SUSE because for him it's super very early morning. Right, yes. So uh my name is Neil Gampa. I've been uh, I've become a member of the board since January. I, and my dedication shows in that I have it. I, I wind up joining board meetings before I even get to do anything else, including eating breakfast, because it is seven o'clock in the morning my time when that happens. And I'm usually waking up literally 30 minutes beforehand. So I don't even have time to do much of anything other than clean up for the meeting. Um, but yeah, so. Within OpenSUSE, I'm involved in the Heroes team, running a lot of the infrastructure, helping with improving the quality of our services. Uh, so, for example, OpenSUSE Code, the Pagger instance we have at code.opensuse.org, that's that's something that uh, Sasi Olin and myself run. Um, we do a fair bit around you know packaging and improving the infra, uh, for the infrastructure and tools um, in the distribution, and I do a lot of I want to say random, but not exactly random, like a wide variety of, of, of things across the entire spectrum of OpenSUSE, um, from the software stack at the bottom uh, for software management to um, graphical desktop tooling and stuff at the top, um, to try to make the OpenSUSE experience the best that it can be and try to help engage, bring open SUSE to the wider community mindset of the of the open source world to make us more prominent, more visible and more um, active and engaged uh, rather than like kind of sitting in a corner where nobody really hears about us. So like that, that's kind of what I, I try to aim and focus on. Cool. And then there's also Sid who joined us. <laughs> Sits didn't come in through the election, um, but joined the board as a treasurer. So he's a co-opted board member. Yeah, so a non-voting board member, as um, some people like to point out sometimes. But, um, I love you anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad to hear. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm, I'm 35. I've been a financial controller or financial accountant as well for like 15 years now, working as an auditor, um, first like auditing financial statements. Um, and then I worked for Tele2 uh, as a financial controller, and then I worked for uh, Nova Media, which is the postcode lotteries um, in the Netherlands. And now I'm a freelance financial controller. People can just hire me. And one of the things that I really enjoy like in my free time is actually working, or not really working, but um, like spending time on open source and um, um, yeah, just computer stuff. Um, that's completely a hobby of mine. I've not studied for it. I'm not a programmer. I, I just like it. Um, within OpenSUSE, I really like the, the micro OS project. Um, I'm a big um, yeah, believer of an immutable OS future. And I think that um, it's going to be used in loads of places. Like my daughter, who's four year old, her laptop is, um, is a micro OS laptop that she can just install some software via flat packs and she cannot do anything else on it. Um, except for turning it off and on again. Um, and so I'm I just like Gert Jan, I live in Groningen. I um, am married, I have two kids. One is hopefully still sleeping at the moment. And the other one is just relaxing on the couch next to me um, watching some TV. Uh, and I joined the board now as a, um, as a treasurer since um, financial stuff is sort of my um, um, my skill. So I can help um, the board and I help, can help OpenSUSE actually with something that I can actually help with or contribute with. So um, thanks for that. Cool. And, and maybe a quick round of intros for the old board members, uh, starting with Axel, who is old and new at the same time. Yeah, that's true. Thank you, Gerald. Uh, hi, I'm Axel. I uh, was just recently re-elected for the second term on the board. Um, I live in Dusseldorf. Uh, I have uh, two kids just to pick this up where one of the kids still lives with me and he just came down preparing a sandwich and made me feel hungry. <laughs> 
Um, I'm mostly packaging stuff, uh, software that I think is useful, software that I'm uh, using myself, and I'm mo more focusing on the desktop side of life. So I'm um, uh, running Tumbleweed with the latest KDE desktop, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy about it. I'm OpenSUSE member since ooh, the 2000s, I think, was already some time ago. And uh, beside this, I'm mostly only active on the on the mailing list so not so much on discord or the forums but nevertheless i look into this every now and then and in my daily life i work as a business consultant um, project manager and um, with a focus on on supply chain projects then we have simon uh, i'm next okay I'm Simon. I'm no longer the most dedicated member of the board. At one point, I had to get up at 5.30 a.m. for meetings. Now they're just after dinner, and that's far nicer. So thanks, Neil. Um, nice. I'm in Adelaide, Australia. <laughs> I've been on the board for three and a half years now. I package stuff in OpenSUSE, like the Enlightenment desktop. Um, and I also work for SUSE as part of the packaging and maintenance and security side of things and that's probably about it cool and last but not least we we for wins hey um i'm vince i'm put your microphone up please vince can't hear you is it better now yeah. yes yeah. okay um, hi, I'm Vince. I'm working at Tuxedo Computers as a product manager uh, slash marketing slash whatever is to be done in technical stuff. And I kind of joined the board in around end of February last year as I was not elected but appointed to an open seat. And since then, I'm serving on the board. Cool. Um, and, and I realized I didn't, uh, Doug didn't introduce me and I didn't introduce myself. <laughs> I didn't finish it. I, I realize now after hearing everyone else talk, I didn't actually say anything else about what I do and who I am. <laughs> Yeah, everybody um, knows Gerald, so he doesn't have to introduce himself. Yeah. Okay, I'm Gerald or Jerry <laughs> or Gerald, um, CTO at Susan and um, chair chair of this board. Um, yeah, one thing as a board we have been thinking about, I would say a fair bit on and off over the last months is how to improve transparency within OpenSUSE, um, how to you know, what we from our side can do to help improve communications. And, and one of the things we realized is, is our board meetings um, uh, might be good, might, might be a good approach. And so 12 days ago, we started um, with public board meetings. Um, given, you know, given the time zone spread we have between mostly Simon, um, EMEA central, central EMEA and um, US East Coast. The, the slot we found is pretty much to the only one that works without making anyone doing calls at 5 a.m. or past midnight. Um, so unfortunately, there's not much flexibility there. But um, I was very, I was very positively surprised by the first, by the first public board meeting we had. Um, it was a was a handful of people, um, but it was one of the more, one of, I would say of the more productive board meetings we had. And not only was it an opportunity to listen, we actually got really good interaction, got really good input. And I think the work we have been doing and some of the decisions um, and the conversations actually really, really benefited from that. So. Uh, definitely something we are we are going to continue. Definitely something we are new to. So there is learning on our side, learning on the side of the board, learning on the side of the project. So we welcome feedback on how to make this more useful to you, how to 
make this more transparent, how to make this more open. Um, and, you know, we'll make it better over time. Um, and next one, an invitation, Neil is going to send out an email um, soon. Next one is this coming Monday, 1 p.m. Central European time, 7 a.m. Um, Eastern Daylight in the U.S. And past dinner in Australia. What, what is it in Adelaide, Simon? <laughs> if I press the mute button, I can talk. Um, it's about 8.30. Ah, okay. So that's really good. Um, and one of the things... Um, so that's one step we have taken, and and another step we have we we have started to look into and actually started to put into action is to be to to make it easier to submit topics, to be more transparent on some of the on most of the items, as many as possible that the board handles, um, just publicly, and and for that Neil actually has helped us move towards. Um, a cool new system that we are also evolving as we go. So that's that's another project that's actually started to deliver already, but we're we are also happy to receive feedback. And yeah, Neil, can you go into that a little bit and introduce folks to that? Yeah, sure. So um, so as I said when I was introducing myself, one of the things that I wanted to do was you know make OpenSUSE more visible and not. And, and that also includes two people in OpenSUSE. And uh, something, as that had also dovetailed into my setting up the, um, the new code forge that we have for people to use to develop free software projects within the OpenSUSE project, um, I thought that it'd be a great idea to start using that so that we can give people an easy way to, to you know, talk to us uh, about things that are not sensitive uh, so that we can, you know, not only do asynchronous communication that is easily tracked, and so we don't have to remember it in our heads, which is was before before this was actually a problem. Like we had to remember what we were going to do and and figure out all that stuff. Now we have, you know, something that we can refer to, but also because I wanted to make it so that we didn't have to come up with what we needed to talk about as a group. I wanted to make sure that the community could also be involved in this process as well. And so uh, if you go to code.opensusa.org slash board slash tickets, you can see that we have a uh, repo there with an issues tab where you can file an issue about something that you would like some uh, feedback from the board on. And this may not necessarily turn into something that requires a meeting, but it certainly will turn into something where we can discuss this with the community in a structured, uh, more visible form. And if it does require a meeting, like if it's something that we can't resolve in the ticket out of the gate, then we will mark it to be something for a meeting. And in our next public board meeting, we'll talk about it. And the, it's a very simple process up front. I wanted to keep it super lightweight so that, you know, cause we're learning and we're figuring out how we want to do this. And as that evolves, we can implement more structures as needed or do more separations or whatever. But I wanted to keep this, I wanted the on-ramp to be very, very simple. And I'm hoping what this does is it makes it, you know, more clear what the board actually does, what they can and can't do, and how we go about doing what we can do. So I'm not sure if you can read the chat there, Neil. But Lubos said you should mention mention feature requests moving there as well. Oh yeah. So uh, no, I can't read the chat because I'm on another computer, and Venulus is a uh, is an annoying platform that requires a token to log in every time. Uh, but uh, and I don't have the token on this computer. <laughs> but um, yeah. So something that came up during the OpenSUSE Leap 15.3 development, and I got hit with all the edge cases. So like I felt particularly in pain from this was um, it was pretty hard to coordinate and figure out like what we needed to do. And I was fortunate enough to be in a semi-privileged position to be able to interface with, you know, lovely SUSE folks about it. But that like I, me being the only one doesn't scale and, and the system that they're using 
makes it um, really difficult for everyone else to do it too. And so I'd been talking to Lubos for a few weeks now about the idea of leveraging the same process that we've been using for, for the board to actually adapt that to do the same kind of feature request handling for OpenSUSE Elite for 15.4, because um, while it might be small up front, what I actually honestly expect that as we can develop this process to help the community be more engaged in the development of OpenSUSE Elite, both Slee and Leap will benefit, and there will also just be more stuff. After a certain point, a wiki page is just not going to not going to work, and uh, and like when you need to track feedback and iterations on what's going on and syncing things back and forth forth between SUSE internal and uh, and the and, and the public community and making sure everyone is on the same page. Um, Lubush and I agreed that it, it'd be a good idea to try this for fifteen point four. So I set up. Um, code.opensusa.org slash leap slash features as a repository for for doing exactly that. People can file feature requests about things that they need, whether it's for Slee or Leap. And then Lubosh and I, along with other release managers, will make determinations based on whether it needs SUSE involvement for Slee components. And we will you know, follow up and make sure that the community is supported to make their their things that they want to do and provide an OpenSUSE Leap possible. We want to help make OpenSUSE Leap the best quality, stable, long-term supported enterprise Linux class distribution out there. <laughs> With the latest and greatest KDE, of course. <laughs> I would I was going to I was going to look how this is going to end like dramatic pause. Yeah, it was a long <laughs> word. <laughs> I, I had to, I was trying to come up with a word that describes exactly how I feel about OpenSUSE Leap, and it turns out there isn't just one, and so I, I just went with all of them. You got the leap. You got the link the wrong way around. It's actually leap slash leap slash features. Ah, I thought I said code slash leap slash features for everyone else the link is already in the chat oh good sorry i can't like just paste or type things because again wrong computer and and venue list is dumb and does not let me just use login credentials or sso um that's why you use synergy to copy and paste it between your computers i if i had thought about that before i joined into this i probably would have set that up thank you simon i will remember that for the next time i am doing something like this again between two computers on a virtual platform that doesn't let me log in between two different computers with the same credentials talking about which one of the one of the roles the board has um has to deal with and that's not part of the public meetings um is conflict resolution <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks one of, to the, one of the other board. things the board is also very good at is going off topic and being sidetracked <laughs> and driving yeah. our chairman nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Not that you would ever see any of that here. Um, and and so um, one of the one of the thoughts ideas that has come up that we have been working on a little, and I'll I'll defer to Hyatian and Simon, is. Um, moderation, consistent moderation of um, across online channels. Yeah. Um, one of the things we concluded uh, was that there was a pretty big discrepancy between, uh, for example, the mailing lists, uh, the forums, and our other online channels. Um, don't want to go into details that much, but one thing I can say is that the complaints that the board received were most, mostly about the mailing list. So we started talking about moderating them. And uh, we actually did. And I think we haven't done it long enough to uh, define some proper uh, result of it. But I think that uh, our guiding principles, our TNC, they should be across the community when we agree that to that as a board. Simon? And to add to that, to also 
help with the consistency and for a bit of accountability so that the board has an understanding of what goes on. What we're looking at implementing, I'll say looking at because we discussed it last meeting and we haven't exactly figured it all out yet and we have plenty of people to talk to about that, is getting everyone who's moderating a platform together in the same space, whether it's a forums or Discord or RC or mailing lists, um, so that we can all share information about who's being moderated, um, partly so that the board has an idea of how many people we're moderating over a year, other than obvious spam, and so we can see any discrepancies. And partly it'll help us detect any issues that might arise if we can see that someone's never had any action taken on the platform I moderate, but Neil has already given them three warnings on some other platform, then that's useful information for us to be able to share as a group of moderators. So if you moderate a platform, look forward to us getting in touch with you about that yeah, at some point soon once we figure it out. It, yeah, exactly. And like this is also somewhat consistent with the strategy that as uh, a project that we're trying to have, which is uh, we, we want to make sure that regardless of which platform that you're communicating with the community on, whether it's Matrix, Discord, Telegram, or IRC, um, from the real-time perspective, or forums, or the mailing list from an asynchronous perspective, we want to make sure that those are relatively unified and consistent so that, you know, people who are, you know, talking to each other, th there is no divide that makes it difficult for, for people to follow along with what's going on. And, you know, in the real time chats, this is, this is being also handled by um, unify, like bridging all of the communications channels together. Now this is not complete. This is, this is still in progress. Um, because we, we literally just got our matrix server working like a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and, and we're trying to make sure that um, at least in the real time side, we want to make sure that if you're on, if you're on matrix, you can talk to someone who's on discord, who can talk to someone who's on telegram without having to be in all three places at the same time. And this is also something that this unified uh, moderation stuff that we haven't, quite figured out how to do yet is supposed to help keep the uh, you know keep things uh um according to our code of conduct and our guiding principles and the way that we want you know we want people to be uh friendly and awesome and have a lot of fun being part of the project and being part of the community and when i say we will figure it out the way means not just the board, but some of the moderators as well, most likely. Yeah, it, yeah. it's not just us because like that. It, this is not an idea of being like totally top down on here. We are before we even started considering this, we engaged with the with some of the moderators from the various platforms to figure out, you know, what is even feasible and whether the idea is even good. And the reason we're even moving forward with this is because they told us that this actually would be helpful for them too, to make it you know, better and make the experience better. And we just, we want this to be a nice place to be in. Yeah, especially because we all think that, uh, well, I personally had complaints from people being treated rude and uh, it means that you know, you, you, we are losing users in such, case, such cases. And in a friendly environment, uh, these new users that feel at home, that feel comfortable, uh, and they will pull in their friends. They will, um, they will pull in their friends. And that's growth, um, especially these young people. They're the future of, of, of open source and SOSA. Yeah, and and those people who become excited and love the community and love the project, they they want to learn how to make it better, and they become contributors. Yeah, that's and how Neil, I started. I was just going to say, in a rare occurrence, people in the chat think you're actually too quiet. 
Wait, what? I'm too quiet? <laughs> Volume, not quantity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me, I'll, I'll fiddle with as you, as, as you can tell, we actually do manage to have some fun on the board. Um, I mean, there is uh, um, loads of friendly choking usually going on in the meetings. And, and, and Neil said it, and I really want to emphasize, actually, I just looked it up to make sure I quote it properly. Um, we want to have a lot of fun is, is, and that's a literal quote from our guiding principles. And another one is we are working together in a friendly manner. And I'm sure in most cases there is no bad intentions, but I've also seen the guiding principles sometimes used like as a weapon. And um, for me, the guiding principles should stand for something. Um, mm. And obviously, if you stand for, you need to you need to push back on some things. You need to defend the freedom. You need to need to defend the the safe space that you have. But I think sometimes, you know, yeah. smiling, thinking, is this really so important, or is there another way of of looking at this than my way or the way I have right now? Mm. Um, is a really good thing. And I, unfortunately, in the tool, I don't see whether he is on. But last year, I had lots of conversations with, with Christian and I can, Christian Boltz, and I can tell you, um, Christian is not something anyone can convince easily if he has a firm <laughs> position. And I'm not someone you can convince easily if he has a firm position. But what I really appreciated and what I found really valuable is having this interest and interest to listen and and understand and then you know maybe take a step back and say you know what i i still think this shade of green is nicer but i can understand why you why you want that shade of green and how can we how can we put that together and you know do something that's checkers or on mondays we wear this shade and on tuesday we wear that shade or frankly, and that has happened, and that's what I really because that's not easy. That's what I really appreciated in in to use that example um, conversation. Sometimes you realize you're wrong and say, you know, that wasn't. I missed something. Um, and the reason I'm mentioning this is interestingly enough, the conflict resolution in the last two years has actually shifted a bit on the board. Um, initially, there was mostly mailing lists, hence. Thanks for addressing this. But in the, in the last months, I say, we started getting about one, feels like once a month, complaints and code contributions, you know, on between reviewer and contributor or between co-maintainers or so. Um, and there we don't have a good approach yet. So um, let's see how that involves. You know, I'm not. I'm hoping it's not the beginning of a of a trend. I'm not, not hoping this is like a wave. Um, but if if any of you has interest and skills to see how we can actually put in place um, a group of people um, or something, um, a process to help navigate and and mediate, um, that might be one of the things that we will have to face. Um, is a group so yeah um, something that about that particular topic i think you know personally speaking i think that one of the reasons why we're seeing this is because as we i think to some extent they were kind of always there um but it was more of which ones were louder and which ones were um more of a problem as we have started solving these problems and started working with, you know, the other members in our community to make um, sustainable solutions to um, handling this stuff, uh, the frequency of this stuff has gone down. This is this makes me so happy. The frequency of the stuff that comes to us has gone way down, and and the and we're we're able to tackle some of the other aspects of this to. You know, in, in some respects, we've never fully implemented our guiding principles uh, in a way that makes it um, consistent and understandable to the community. 
uh, when it comes to how we should work with each other and, and that sort of thing. And getting to that point where, you know, with this, with this year of doom uh, caused by, a, you know, a worldwide pandemic, I think it's just amplified that particular gap that we've had. And now that we have been solving it, things are starting to get better. I've noticed in the, in, in a number of chats and a number of spaces yeah. that um, people are happier again, <coughs> like communicating with each other and using and, and starting to want to contribute to open Sousa. Uh, and that is making me very happy because I didn't, I never liked seeing people leave because they felt like they were um, not able to be heard or not able to uh, feel welcome or any of those sorts of things. And so, yeah, I, I don't have any more structured thoughts on this. Hey, um, I just want to, like, you, you kind of hit on it, Neil. Um, you know, Ben actually asked the question, you know, has, have you seen more? An increase in the code, code of conduct, and you you kind of like definitely hit onto that. Um, so I just want to point out some of the questions. I know they're being answered, uh, but I thought Attila brought up a really interesting one with that kind of relates to our panel yesterday, which was um, you know interconnecting all the communication channels. The newer aspect of mediating it, uh, you know, the trolls tend to move out pretty quick, and they reappear somewhere else um is it so something that has been an interesting side effect side of us bridging um the real-time chats and unifying the moderation control across matrix telegram and discord was that we don't get people of try attempting to evade our bans anymore because as soon as they try they get whacked again anyway and so um people who act um dishonorably in in the in any of the chats just they get pushed out fairly quickly and it it, it avoids it, it makes it so that there it's not a problem uh and in general that has actually changed the balance of people who come in like it used to be that um we get people coming in um saying frankly stupid things uh and stuff that's deliberately trollish or or whatever uh and then they would just hide in a corner you know pretend to be nice a little bit and then do it again later and because uh, in another platform so they would evade one platform jump to another and then come back and then and that sort of thing uh with the real-time chats nobody does that anymore because yeah. because they can't it, do, it doesn't work we know that, that they're them we know what's happening and and it gets it gets shut down very quickly. So even the, spam attacks are basically dead. To know, add to know. add Neil, uh, over time we have uh, gotten together a pretty nice team of admins, moderators, etc., uh, all over the world. So there's pretty pretty basically always someone there that can moderate moderate. Yeah, I think the only platform where we have a, a, a true gap here is IRC. And and that's been complicated by recent events that has made this difficult. <laughs> and Simon, you're muted. I was gonna say in some ways the recent events have actually fixed it. That's true. And we now do we now do have a better spread of moderators. Partly yeah. because I'm now one in the time zones where no one else is awake. Right. Yeah. The the spammers on IRC that show up at midnight <laughs> my time where there's no coverage is uh, now covered by Simon. So lucky me. <laughs> um, maybe people are also getting happier now with um, COVID being over or that's that's also like getting thing. over and summer coming and stuff. But um, I don't know. Oh, that could absolutely be a factor. Like, yeah. uh, when you're but it's winter when... and rainy here. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, I'm it's sweating now. So. <laughs> so I don't. I don't think COVID has anything to do with it. 
Um, no, I meant like the lockdowns, people being locked up and getting annoyed with not being able to go anywhere. Yeah. It makes to answer more. to answer Payne's question, have you seen an increase and how have you dealt with it maybe before um, before we covered the last topic we had prepared and then completely open up. Um, yeah, we have seen that and I mean what and I'm, I'm not arg I'm not claiming there's a causal relationship. There is a very clear temporal relationship. Um, I'm often accused as being as erring on the side of softness. Um, I'm usually trying to balance and, and, and mediate. But there was one board meeting end of last last year where I essentially I think I started the meeting and say, okay, everyone, <laughs> enough is enough. We need to take some, we need to take strong action. Um, and that may have been the one board meeting where most warnings and moderations, etc., cetera, uh, were more issued than I think than the year before. I mean, it still wasn't a huge number, but I think maybe sometimes becoming the, I mean becoming a little stricter and sending a signal um, can help yeah, yeah um, maybe to add a, one word when we're having conflicts and we're trying to to moderate we try to hear both sides and then talk to the people try to get a moderated discussion between the individuals involved unfortunately we found out that this is not working in all cases, because sometimes people just refuse to talk. And uh, if somebody from the community has an idea how we can cope with that, I think that would be would be very much welcome as well, right? Because I mean, we can only hear help if the people are willing to listen to the other one and to pick the information up and to think about the own behavior. But if they're completely rejecting to talk and saying, hey, this is my stake, my, my, my point, and I'm not moving, what do we do? That pause, with that pause, um, I don't think we really mentioned, but go ahead and and if you have questions, um, please put them in the in the chat uh, on stage one. Mm. And, <laughs> and we and can, now I don't really know how to bridge. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but continue on, Georg. Continue on. I just want to. I can just start yeah. talking. Let's end on a let's end on a happy note, which is budget. <laughs> Yay, money. money. <laughs> uh, maybe we can take one thing along uh, as a last subject because Ben asks, Alubos asks uh, to, uh, us to talk about collaboration with other distros, other that communities. Just, I just moderated towards SIDS to talk about budget, yeah. let, let's, which was the yeah. last topic we had prepared. Let's, let's let have SIDS talk about budget and then- we'll Okay, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned Christian already. Uh, one more thing. Oh boy! Uh, and then another three subjects. No, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Gerald. No, sits sits yeah. at the stage. Oh. So um, like I, I started the board, or I joined the board because um, I wanted to help as a treasurer and to actually help um, like with the financial stuff, with the financial side of the project, mainly as well because of um, like I figured something with a foundation would be a good idea and. With the foundation it's probably also very useful to have someone that like has some sense of actual like financial statements of uh, reporting of, of tax filings and stuff um but that's not the only thing that a treasurer does of course because like everything else just continues um that was there before like the the travel support program um last year we didn't really have any travel support so that was kind of easy for me to start with um and starting also as a liaison sort of between SUSE and OpenSUSE, um, I've been trying to, um, to talk to people. To, I've, I've spoken to Andrew about what he was doing. Um, I've spoken to a few more people like Doug. Um, and I've, I'm just trying to get a sense of everything that is happening financially um, with the project and how sort of OpenSUSE and SUSE are intertwined 
and um, what we can actually start of start to do to even make a foundation if that's like actually financially possible. Um, so that's sort of what I've been doing. Um, and uh, that's what I wanted to say about it. I don't know if anyone has any questions about it in a few minutes. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So before we go further, we had a half item on the topic and someone's asked a question about the foundation. So I guess that means I get to talk to it, talk about it. Um, basically the status on the foundation is not much has changed since we made the proposal at the conference several years ago, as people would be well aware, Susan management has completely changed a couple of times. And so we're basically at the point where we need some people to sit down and write a business case of, to a large extent financially about what we need, how it will save Sousa money, which it should do, and stuff like that. So we can start to present that to the new Sousa management and make a really compelling case. That is yeah. something I'm happy to work on at some point when I get time. I don't know quite when that is yet, hopefully soon. But if others would like to work on that as well, get in touch and we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Uh, you meant probably others outside the, the board because we have already started and prepared yes. a basic pre uh, presentation yeah. about it. And yeah. just, just thinking loud, um, if we're not moving forward with the foundation, which needs a certain involvement of SUSE as well, maybe it's an idea to start with a kind of supporting organization. Uh, what do I know? The, the GECO association or something like that, which is dedicated to support uh, the Open SUSE project, but is not a, a foundation in that case, but could be um, a much lighter thing. Many schools in Germany have these kind of supporting associations. So when your kids enter the school, they ask you, won't you join this, this association? Then they're collecting money and giving this to the schools to buy stuff. Uh, that they are not able from the from the budget that they're getting from the government. Yeah, and that's that's also kind of a thing in 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 the United States as well. There's a specific class of charities that is designed for yeah. clubs and associations to be able to handle that sort of thing. My yeah. my personal opinion about about having a foundation or a charity organization supporting it or owning the Open Source project is, I really would like for us to behave more like we are that way before we actually are because that's a lot easy it's a lot less dangerous to make mistakes when you don't have that legal structure underneath you up front like yeah and, and so, i want to make sure we have those practices developed and and things like that before we make that jump because i don't want to get that wrong so before yeah. we did our last foundation related proposal probably a year before that, which would have been before. I think everyone other than Neft was on the board. We did look at that and the conclusion we came to was it wasn't really feasible in that capacity. And we should either pursue a full fledged foundation or we're not going to get benefits that outweigh the risks. Mm. From the other one. Yep. Yeah, there's, one there's a, in between, we, we changed it or we, we shifted the, the focus a little bit. The idea at that point was to build an EV, an Eingetragener Verein, as we call it in Germany, and uh, to transfer all the, uh, the, the, the trademark and everything to this foundation. No, uh, this, this, was, EV. this was before that we looked yeah. at the idea you just proposed as well, would have yeah. been before you're on the board. I, regardless of that's probably maybe future discussions anyway yeah. regardless yeah. Of, of what mechanism of implementing a legal structure for the open SUSE project i personally am not comfortable with the idea of doing so until we've done practice rounds where we, we actually behave like we have one before we actually have one like it was Sorry. important that we got sids on the board 
and actually, you mm. know, being our treasurer and, and actually participating as a non-voting board member to me, because it means that we are at least more closely getting set up to be able to handle things properly yeah. before we actually have to. So one of the um, key things that's always come up in this discussion is it's great that we now have SIDS, but if in 10 years time we don't have SIDS and we're not doing our reporting, then the legal fines we could get for not meeting our reporting uh, would, would be, be enough big. to completely sink the project. And so one thing that we've always maintained strongly in our previous proposals is that we would like SUSE to help sponsor Open SUSE by means of helping to cover some of that paperwork, in which case it becomes a non-issue for anyone. We have a guarantee that we're going to meet our legal reporting requirements because SUSE would provide resources to do that. And that's obviously one of the things that if we come up with any sort of business case for a foundation, we need to be showing that there is large benefits to a foundation that offset that cost. And yeah. that cost would, and one of the things we looked at with the smaller organizations is even though smaller organizations require some level of paperwork and yeah. would inherently have that risk. Yeah, that's right. We're probably, as Gerald would say, we're probably now discussing detailed semantics of stuff that's doesn't need to be discussed in detail in a board meeting at this point, which is the other thing we do along with getting sidetracked all the time. Yeah. We get into the details far more than we probably should, which makes our, <laughs> yeah, at happens least quickly. We, yeah. At least we've stopped taking three hour meetings for a one hour time slot. So there's, there's that. So speaking of running over time, just to let you know, Oh, we can continue as we're, we're not over time, but continue as long as uh, the next speaker comes in. So can continue as long as you want. I was I was going to suggest that maybe this is a good time for us to move into the Q and A stage to make it easier for anyone else who wants to ask us questions. Which I can't see anything else Hatton, popping up in Hatton, the chat. Hatton mentioned that someone had actually asked for us to talk about a collaboration topic earlier. So I yeah. guess that would be good to start back up with. Yeah. So what was the topic in particular, Hartan? Um, let me read out the question. Ben asked, you, uh, Lobos asked, uh, by the way, one thing that I forgot to uh, Gerald when he was asking for topics was collab with other distributions. Ben started distributors.club which I think is a pretty cool idea. What's your thoughts? Uh, I've been doing a lot of hanging around with Fedora guys that sort of happened uh, thanks to Neil. Um, but uh, I found that, uh, you know, we discuss issues a lot in, in the bar and on the chat channels, uh, issues that both communities meet. And it, we also think that from a perspective that we have in our guiding principles, uh, why not be nice to other distributions and cooperate? Why well, have teams on both, both sides working on the same upstream bug? Uh, if we could find a way, and it will take time to co get that more coordinated. I know there's uh, the policy, political issue that it would be also Sousa and Red Hat cooperating, maybe, but the thought, uh, why do the work all over again? And cooperate. We can learn from, in my opinion, their, uh, their organizational structure. And the people from Fedora admit that we have a lot of tools uh, that they could learn from, that we do stuff in a way that they could do better. So, so I guess I could say that in my role as part of SUSE, I see that 
in some areas we do do this really well already, but more mm-hmm. so on the Caesar spot side, especially with regards to security issues. We do a good job of working with other distros to have fixes for for issues before you even know there are issues. Mm-hmm. So in that sp- in that space where the collaboration is most important, there already is a lot, but there are certainly plenty of other places where we can learn. Or, as I'm not sure if it's an Australian I'd, Australian saying, but we should definitely be shamelessly stealing ideas from other people. It's an American saying as well, for yeah. sure. Good ideas. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's it. I, th- I think this collaboration actually happens already, and I'm, I'm I love to see that. And it's at different levels. In some cases, it's one person who who's you know one foot here, one foot there. I mean, Ben, if you ever meet, I'll ask you whether whether Neil, when he talks with you, starts every third question with "In Open Suse we do," um, because that sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes he's a run where he says, in Fedora, we do. Um, but it's good because that's actually bridging, that sharing. Hey, I've seen this here and it works. I mean, the well, other model so is... Often there... I have my Fedora hat for <laughs> such cases. <laughs> um, you know, if, yeah, if you, learning. If you look so at the is... mailing list posts on the Fedora mailing list, I mentioned OpenSUSE a lot. I mentioned it. <laughs> It, it comes up a lot where I, I basically hammer like some of our tooling and processes around this stuff just kind of sucks. And these problems are very well solved in OpenSUSE. Why can't we do stuff like it there here? Because it's just, I'm spoiled now. I don't want to have to do the crap work all the time anymore. Um, the and also in the bug reports, like it doesn't work in OpenSUSE. Fix it now, please. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's there where individuals cross um, and, and are, you know, have anchors, feet, roots in, in more than one community. Um, other models I've seen work very nicely um, is, I know that from the toolchain people, because I'm in, I've been engaging in GCC for like a long time, it's just for the red and green or blue and green um, people to work together. So, I mean, one does the SUSE side, one does the Fedora uh, Fedora side, and you know, using the new version of GCC and 229 packages break. Um, but sitting here and sitting there, you work together, right? And you don't care. It's just we work on together on the joint project. And and there is at the project level. And, and so one thing that I've at first when I because I was not involved, so I can't take any credit as much as this is something to really take credit and give kudos to whoever did, is the, is the mutual sponsoring um, and this relationship that, that Fedora and OpenSUSE have, right? I mean, that's the first time I saw it. It's like, this is, isn't this a little odd? And then actually, no, because there is so much commonality. And I don't know. I mean, Doug is instrumental, I'm sure, or has been in that. And Doug he's is amazing. Keeping that. And that's... You know, this thinking a little out of out of the box and out of like this is my territory and everyone else go away. And that that goes that goes great lengths. Um, and yeah, I'm totally open. Let's do let's do more of that. I, it's nice to have this identity, right? In a relationship, in a partnership, whatever, doesn't mean you become the other. Um, there is things that that Fedora will that will be differentiate Fedora positively and uh, hopefully there are things that will will keep to differentiate OpenSUSE positively and and that's we have fine a cool mascot that's a, um, we have a cool mascot there is no mascot for Fedora sadly <laughs> no. despite everyone's best efforts we have a cool mascot um, and they don't and then have this i think have this friendly competition where you have differentiation and but you also you know when you see something works well um work together um and i think this together and apart in the in the in a constructive manner i mean that's great that that is really that is really i think one of the strong points of open source 
Uh, one of the good things about uh, the two communities for Fedora and OpenSUSE is that uh, I've met quite some people from Fedora and I joined their release party, uh, etc. And I never met one single person that objected against Neil being a board member of OpenSUSE. Not one single. So apparently nobody cares. I've seen that differently in other communities. So have I. Oh my gosh. You know, it's not just Fedora and OpenSUSE. I mean, I'm in a number of, uh, I'm in a number of other distributions. Like mm. Fedora and OpenSUSE have a level of cooperation and friendliness that I have not experienced in other communities. And that has made, it has made it a lot easier for me to bring all the interesting things that I come up with, regardless of where it starts from, whether it's in Fedora or OpenSUSE, and bring it to both. Uh, and in other places, it's more difficult. And, it's, and, and it makes me sad sometimes because, you know, at, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is to promote free software and to, and, and to make it the default choice, whether you're, you're just working, whether you're playing, whether you're living, whether you, whatever you're doing. And in order to make free software successful, we've got to, we have to work together to produce the best free software. And I don't know how else we would do it unless we like, certainly there's going to be some duplicative effort, but that effort can actually be useful because some of the other perspectives can see some of the other paths that are being tried, see whether they work or they don't. And eventually we can resolve to common to a common path, but being able to experiment, to be able to try these different paths, and then see where they fail and where they succeed is ultimately how we can also help in, in collaboration. Um, real quick thing. I, I wanted to go to Patrick. I know, I know, uh, Simon, uh, you've been responding a bit to, to Patrick's um, comments in there. It, it, he does bring up a valid point and you, and you do as well. Like you, there is a system in place to like keep the knowledge and share the knowledge, but, you know, where, what's the succession plan? I think that could be probably something that could be part of the elections um, as so, well as something to list. But, but yeah, I mean. I guess I can talk on that slightly because I already answered in chat, so I'll answer here what I said in chat for people that aren't reading it. One of the, one of the questions was how do we train new board members? And so as part of... The design of the board is outlined in our election rules. Everyone has two terms and after their two terms, they have to have a break, which means that we always end up with a some older, more experienced people such as myself sitting on the board alongside some newer people such as Neil. But we have, particularly when Gerald joined, because when Gerald joined, we discovered that Richard is the previous chairperson also held a lot of that knowledge and previous boards probably hadn't done the best at writing that down. So Garrett has helpful has helpfully started to create a wiki page with such knowledge and important information to make that process easier. But probably around election time we could do a better job of explaining what the actual role on the board is and what we're mostly doing so that we help get the best candidates, which at times certain people have tried to do. If someone, there have been times when people have run for the board on a campaign of, I want to achieve this, this and this for the community and this and that, and people have been able to say, well, that's generally not what the role of the board is. We more focus on this and that, but I think it's probably something we can communicate better leading into elections, what our role is and what we're doing most of the time. I would say something like, what is the succession plan or, or something to that effect, um, you know, as, or to be addressed, you know, um, as a common thing that could go forward. 
if you understand what I mean by that. Yeah, yeah we now can. That we have a, now that we have a new system, I can go and create a ticket about that and we'll discuss it further at another meeting. Yeah, uh, and the, the new system has a couple of other features that we might use for this purpose. Like it can host uh, static websites that can be managed through pull requests to update content uh, in a fashion that makes it easier to review and stuff like that. None of that is set up yet because nobody has actually asked for it so far. But um, some of the stuff that we do as the member of the board where we're like, you know, we, we, we have new information. We want to, you know, cumulatively update that while also maintaining all the history and authorship and being able to see, you know, what and why and all those things. And also just having a more consistent, discoverable place to find all this stuff. Like some of the issues that we had is some of it that Richard did, in fact, document, but we couldn't find it because finding where it was, I, the wikis are hard. Wikis are very hard. So some of this is also going to, I think, we'll, we'll try to bring it together into a more discoverable place. Maybe it's just markdown files in the board repo that we have. Maybe it'll be a, a doc site or something like that that we, that we have set in the, in the board project or something. I don't know yet, but there's a couple of options of like, how do we want to make this a little bit more discoverable? Anyway, we now have a ticket for that. It's in all the chats. Yeah, and, 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 and Richard, I guess you... maybe something that would be useful in that ticket is if you see us talking about this and you think you could possibly like to be a candidate in the next election, and there's stuff you're not sure about, add stuff to the ticket so that we know to help us know what to address. Goodness knows that I was confused when I started doing when I started trying to figure out what I was supposed to do. I think Simon and I had a couple of hours of conversation about this before I even like, you know, threw up my candidacy because I just didn't know what I would be what I could even do. That's probably a good yes, idea. And on that point, also feel free to just ask current members of the board. We're mostly a friendly bunch. We mostly don't bite. We'll I like mostly, mostly talk to you about qualifier. it in a reasonable way. I mostly. Like mostly qualifier. We, we mostly mock each other and not people that come to us. Yeah, as like Simon does on apparently a regular basis to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I should mention Richard actually did it hand over a, a fair bit of of knowledge and information to me um so he, he put a he put great effort into that um which which was very valuable i think it's the um, sometimes it was the easy things that um you know the the more day-to-day -day things that mm -hmm. nobody thinks about because you're on the board for for a couple of years and everything for you is very natural that this is this is how we do it right um and so some of those i had to um i had to discover and i'm sure and and that's a natural process for everyone in a new role i mean that just is natural for every every new board member and it, it would always be but how can we make it more I mean, how, yeah, how can we, in, in, a, in the light of succession, how can we document things, so even some of the easier, you know? How do you just, <laughs> we change the board meeting, the time of the board meeting, how do, we, how do we change a reminder email? Because there is actually a rather clever system. Um, and that's, um, and I think one of the heroes, probably Christian helped me with that. And, and once you know it, it's easy. Um, but if you if there is an email you get and you don't know where it's coming from, then um, you I mean, say it's more it's easy, but many but boards many have struggled, struggled many times, times with that to get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now it's documented. I documented, and now it's really simple. So it's that kind of thing. I mean, and not, that's not that's not critical for a open source project. But yeah, really, some of the best practices um, and and. Uh, 
it's more transparent for others. So I think it's good to onboard new board members. It increases transparency, which is a good thing um, by itself. And, and also if you, if you write it down, that's actually something then you can work with because maybe you realize or a new board realizes we want to handle it differently. But if it's, if it's written, then it's something that's more tangible um, and then, then you can explicitly tackle that. So, um, but you're all. Uh, uh, you're Gerard, right. I, I think that we have to thank Simon first. Uh, he needs to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> you just wrote that. Yeah, oh. I'll go to bed eventually. Not quite yet, but uh, okay. sometime in the next 10 or 15 minutes. Okay. Do we have any any questions left? I'm not sure. I don't think so. What's your time now, Simon? It doesn't look like any questions. That's a great before. question. It's ten past eleven at night. <laughs> oh. So that's the time that your kids would now go out, right? <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 they're not quite old enough yet. <laughs> but I do have to get up at six. Okay, that's another thing. It's Sunday tomorrow, come on. What are you doing on Sunday? At six. I mean, going for a run yeah. could be one thing, at least at our temperatures at the moment. But yeah, I don't think this is the thing of are running, But no. I'm getting up and operating some cameras for a church. Ah, good work. Um... I guess I'll, prob I'll probably try to close out at least some portions. Um, but one thing I do want to say, I want to thank, thank you all for, you know, participating with the, um, with this, you know, this happens every year and I think the community looks forward to it. Uh, I also want to thank all of our sponsors that, you know, have participated in, uh, in one big thing that's like happening here and is the video team and they're doing incredible work and they do every year um so you know a lot of appreciation goes out to their efforts and absolutely so shout out to them big thanks up <laughs> definitely and, and and you know actually i didn't explicitly mention the video team i think there is we have volunteers that help moderate the sessions so beyond those special specific cases i mentioned it's just amazing there's a lot of work going in an event like this. And I mean, Doc, you know, because you're the guy who actually pulls and holds it together. Um, talking about succession plan or backup plan. Mm. <laughs> we need to dump your brain at one point <laughs> <laughs> or clone you. Um, yeah, thank it you. Gets, it thank gets you. right? We'll freeze my brain or something. <laughs> we'll put you into a, into a robot. That way, you know, you can you can. You don't have to sleep anymore. <laughs> yeah, maybe then we can share Doc with Fedora. He, you know, yeah. half of the day he does Open Suse, half of the day yeah. Fedora. I'll I I'll check with Ben. I think I want to keep Doug for Open Suse. He's he's like our secret sauce here. <laughs> So you're not too much. You're not completely into sharing. I, I'm sensing. So. <laughs> I like Doug too much. I don't want him to burn out with both. Yeah, one is enough. That's true. Good. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All. Yeah. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody that was here. Yeah, thank you all for, for this great event. And thank you all for coming as well. I should turn my mic on when I talk. But I was going to yeah. say, I won't be one of them because I'm going to go sleep. But I'm, right. I expect there will probably be more board members in the bar on Jitsi for most of the rest of the afternoon if you want to talk to people. And I'll put that link in the chat somewhere. Okay. Good idea. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. It looks like we're going to.
take it offline. So, okay, okay. Where, do, where do we go?